Right, so let's talk about the whole process involved in simplifying radicals. Now, the first thing you have to look for is that the radicand has no factor raised to a power greater than or equal to the index. Okay, so uh, it basically means if your radicand is 2 to the second power and your um, index is 3, then your 2 and 3 are, of course, they don't have anything greater than or equal to, uh, you know, your index. You have to go ahead and make sure that you don't have a situation like that. Your radicand should have no fractions. If it does, use the quotient rule to simplify it. Your denominator must not contain a radical, okay? And the exponents in the radicand and the index of the radical have no common factor. Okay, so these are four things that you will look for when you're trying to decide if your radical is in the lowest or simplified form or not. So again, remember, uh, you know, keep these handy when you're trying to simplify your expression. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples here. Again, we're just trying to simplify. So let's say we have square root of 18 and we want to try and simplify this. So what do we do? First of all, go ahead and write square root of 18 in its factored form, which would be 2 times 9. Okay. Now the reason we're using 2 times 9 is because 9 is a perfect square and I can bring the 9 outside of the radical sign. So that's why we stick with uh, 2 times 9 instead of, you know, 3 times 6. Now, using our product rule, we can go ahead and write this as square root of 2 times square root of 9. So we're going ahead and, uh, you know, splitting those up. And as we know, square root of 9 is 3, and you will end up with 3 times square root of 2. Now, it's generally uh, always where you write the radical second and you write your whole number first. So this still means 3 times square root of 2, but instead of writing the 3 at the back of the radical, you write it in the front. And this will be your radical in the simplified form. Okay? Let's look at another example here. This time we're talking about the cube root of negative 16. Okay, again, we want to see how we can go ahead and simplify this expression. Of course, you have that negative sign. Now, let's see how you can go ahead and rewrite 16. Now, since you're talking about cube roots here, you want to try and find factors of 16 that may have a perfect cube in them, like uh, 8 times 2. Okay, 8 times 2 gives you 16, and 8, as we know, is a perfect cube, so we can go ahead and simplify that. Again, using our product rule, go ahead and split up your radical into cube root of negative 8 times cube root of 2. Cube root of negative 8, as we know, will be negative 2, and cube root of 2 cannot be simplified anymore, so we go ahead and leave it as it is, and this will be your radical in the simplified format, negative 2 cube root of 2. So you have to take it down depending on, you know, what kind of index value you have and how you can break it down. We'll look at a couple more examples, this time involving variables in them. Again, remember, all variables are assumed to be positive real numbers. So you have negative square root of 25 t to the 6th s to the 20th power, and we are trying to put this in a simplified form. So we'll go ahead and rewrite this, break it up into square root of 25, square root of t to the 6th, and square root of s to the 20th. Okay, using our product rule. Now we know square root of 25 is 5. For the variables, go ahead and convert these into rational exponents. Okay, since we're talking about square roots, we know our denominator is going to be 2. 
and you can see from here it will be easy to simplify our variable so you end up with 6 over 2 which gives you 3 and then 20 over 2 will of course give you 10 and you will end up with negative 5 t to the third s to the 10 as your uh, simplified form for the radical that you started out with okay now we're looking at a fourth root here now just like we did earlier we'll go ahead and rewrite this as fourth root of 81 over 256 times fourth root of t to the 12th and multiplied with fourth root of u to the eighth power now if you want you can go ahead and use the quotient rule here and rewrite this as fourth root of 81 over fourth root of 256 okay rewrite your variables as rational exponents and you will end up with t to the power of 12 over 4 times u to the power of 8 over 4 and now you should be able to go ahead and simplify this so fourth root of 81 will be 3 okay fourth root of 256 will be 4 for your variables 12 over 4 will give us 3 so you end up with t to the third power uh, for your u you have 8 over 4 which will of course reduce down to a 2 so you end up with 3 fourths t to the third u squared as your uh, simplified form for the radical okay we'll look at one more example In this example, you can see that it looks like you cannot solve this any further. You have fourth root of 25, but actually you can try and simplify this. The way you work with this is you start with fourth root and rewrite your radicand as an exponential number. So instead of 25, we'll go ahead and write it as 5 squared. Okay? And then convert your radical into an exponential uh, form where write it as a rational exponent when I do that 2 over 4 will reduce down to 1 over 2 right and if I go back and convert this into a radical format we know 5 to the 1 half will become square root of 5 okay so basically um, even though we couldn't you know completely solve this we were still able to break it down and bring it to something much simpler what this follows is basically from the idea of you know if you have something like this where you could see that between 4 and 2 you had 2 as a common factor between these two values you can actually go ahead and cancel out any common value that you are left with okay so here we're using k to show that that is the common factor between your index and your exponent and if we cancel out the k you are left with a to the m over n which was our one half and you can rewrite it as a much more simplified radical okay so that's what we are going for here in this last example